We're at T-minus two minutes. This is the launch of Quadloon Sat, a pack of four identical satellites that will be sent to the moon to form the first lunar communication satellite constellation. This mission is critical for the construction of the planned Paliac Lunar Station. Module 2 of that station is waiting in lunar orbit for the deployment of these satellites so that it will be able to dock with the Paliac Fuel Depot, which will be, become Module 1 of the new station. Without improved communications, Mission Control can't assure the safe docking of the modules, especially since that docking is expected to take place on the side of the moon opposite the Earth. T-minus 1 minute and 20 seconds. The four satellites are being launched on the Saturn 1H rocket, the smallest of the EDB rockets, capable of lifting four tons to low Earth orbit. The rocket is at capacity and the margins on this mission are extremely tight. The launch window for the moon makes this a nighttime launch and we continue to be a go at T-minus one minute. We will be able to bring you telemetry data during this launch, however we will not be able to bring any images from the payload or the satellites because it was impossible to place cameras on the satellites or, or the transfer stage that will be sending them to the moon because of the need to save mass on this extremely trim launch. We are at T minus 30 seconds. All's go at T minus 20 seconds. T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and launch. We have the launch of the Saturn 1H rocket with Quad Loon Sat on its way to low Earth orbit and then the moon. We have a roll program. Rocket looks stable. All systems nominal as we are now above 1.3 kilometers in altitude. Beginning pitch program. Forty seconds into launch, we're at 3.4 kilometers altitude. The solid rocket boosters have a duration of one minute and will be will be out in five seconds now. Solid boosters out. Solid boosters have been decoupled. Rocket continues on its way with the H1 engine continuing to provide thrust for the first stage. The rocket is now over the Atlantic at 12.5 kilometers in altitude, gaining speed. We have a surface speed listed on the telemetry. We will fix that momentarily. The key measure during this phase is the surface velocity, which is the velocity with respect to the surface. The surface speed is merely the horizontal component of that. We are at 19 kilometers in altitude. T plus 1 minute and 40 seconds. The rocket is now well past the intense pressures of the lower atmosphere and on its way to orbit. This is the second of three launches funded by Jebediah Kerman and there was some argument about whether Module 2 should have been launched after these critical satellites because of course it is completely dependent on these satellites in order to dock with the Paliac Fuel Depot but Jeb wanted Module 2 launched before these satellites because he knew that this would be the most difficult launch in terms of the margins involved but also the cheapest and thus most easily replaced. If it was the first and failed he argued that it could derail the whole project however with Module 2 already in orbit that would incentivize a replacement for this launch should it uh, come to some unfortunate end. The difficulty is mainly in making sure all four satellites get into orbit around the moon properly in a proper configuration. We are at T plus 2 minutes and 45 seconds. The rocket is at 48 kilometers in altitude, 44 kilometers downrange. 
we are now awaiting fairing separation, which should occur around T plus three minutes. Fairing separation. Seems as if fairing separation is good. The first stage engine, the H1, now has 45 seconds left of burn to do, a total of four minutes of burn time. And then the second stage, the two RL10A4s, will have another four minutes. And then finally, the third stage, a single RL10A3, will have another four minutes, making a total of 12 minutes to orbit. Twenty seconds till first stage cutout. We are at seventy-three kilometers in altitude, a hundred and thirty-three kilometers downrange. We see the surface velocity as two thousand four hundred meters per second. Now two thousand five hundred, two thousand six hundred as first stage really gets going here right at the end. And there we have first stage cutout. First stage set. Second stage ignition at 4 minutes and 10 seconds, surface velocity 2,800 meters per second. Rocket is now more than 200 kilometers downrange. With SpaceX's attempt to recover the first stage of its Falcon 9 rocket coming so close to success this past week, the EDB is under increased pressure because its own rockets are unusually expensive compared to competitors, especially SpaceX, and there is an uh, increasing price war in the rocket business these days. And the Kerbals simply cannot get good prices on engines. They are not particularly good at negotiating with human businesses, and that is what they have to do in order to get, the, for instance, the H1 and RL10s for this rocket. And so there is... Uh, there is a serious issue about whether the EDB can continue forward in this way. In addition, there is apprehension among humans about the motives of the Kerbals and pressure to avoid selling to them uh, rocket components and whatever else they might want, especially nuclear components which uh, earlier had been made accessible to Kerbals, for instance when they had to send the nuclear reactor to Titan Station, uh, there was there were hurdles that they had to cross in order to gain access and be able to make that launch but otherwise there wasn't any consternation at that time but in the current atmosphere there is now a great deal of concern about what the true motives of the Kerbals might be. But that's secondary to the issue of getting rocket engines at an affordable price and right now the Kerbals are unable to do that and therefore their launches are not competitive and they cannot win contracts as we are at T plus 6 minutes altitude 153 kilometers we are at 623 kilometers downrange rocket is now traveling above 3760 meters per second well on its way to orbit all systems are nominal trajectory is nominal as an example of the pricing pressure facing the EDB, the launch cost for this Saturn 1H rocket is $80 million, and that equates to $20,000 per kilogram, which is way off from all of its competition. This is the most expensive rocket per, per pound or per kilogram for the EDB. However, it is uh, not exactly competitive with its other rockets. For instance, the Saturn 9 uh, costs about $12,000 per kilogram, which is way, way above what SpaceX can offer and all of the other services are beginning to offer now in this new environment. Now T plus 7 minutes 15 seconds, altitude 186 kilometers. Rocket is now 1,000 kilometers downrange, traveling at 4,700 meters per second. We're getting ready for a second stage cutout, but the gap between the first stage and second stage was longer than usual, and so we expect about 20 more seconds. 
Not sure what caused the long gap in the staging. Typically, staging on the Saturn 1H rocket is fairly prompt. Okay, we have second stage cut out. Altitude is at 217 kilometers. Surface velocity 5,270 meters per second. Okay, second stage separation. Third stage ignition, finally, at T plus 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Our clock on the telemetry screen is still a little bit off. Not entirely clear why that is. One of the measures that the EDB is considering in order to make itself competitive again is possibly uh, building engines in-house, so uh, creating its own in-house engine line much like SpaceX has, and that way it would avoid the need to outsource its engines. However, uh, that would need substantial seed money, and the word is that the EDB may sell its stake in Titan Station to private enterprise to fund the project to create its own engine line. And so uh, that is a very valuable asset. They currently have rights to uh, to have access to Titan Station and if for some reason private enterprise would uh, be interested in those rights that would allow the EDB to then fund the engine line. Not entirely sure whether there are any takers on the offer from the EDB or whether that is a legitimate offer or simply a rumor, but that is something being talked about at this point as a future direction for the Elegant Design Bureau. Even without the ability to sell its rights on Titan Station, the EDB is almost certainly going to attempt to create a rocket engine that will serve as the equivalent of the RL-10 and thereby save them from having to purchase the RL-10 which is an expensive engine and an often used engine on all EDB rockets and so because of its heavy use the EDB has a great interest in coming up with its own in-house replacement for the RL-10 uh, however there's no expectation that the EDB itself will be able to create something with quite the efficiency of the RL-10 at this point though Certainly cost efficiency is more important than fuel efficiency when it comes to the rockets that the EDB will launch. T plus 11 minutes, we have the rocket at 277 kilometers in altitude, 6450 meters per second in surface velocity, and it is now at 2330 kilometers downrange. The rocket is expected to burn nearly all of its propellant in order to get this payload into orbit. And so that's that's the tight margins that we were talking about here. If it fails to get a high enough periapsis, it's still possible for the the lunar transfer stage to complete the orbit. However, that would take out possible fuel for the transfer and those margins are also tight. The satellites themselves have station keeping fuel, about uh, 31 liters of monomethyl hydrazine and 31 liters of uh, nitrogen tetroxide apiece, but that is not enough for them to boost their way to any significant degree. That is merely station keeping and getting into proper orbit fuel. Okay, we're awaiting third stage cutout now. 12 minutes 15 seconds, 284 kilometers in altitude, 7,240 meters per second in surface velocity, and there's third stage cut out. The resulting orbit is 314 kilometers apoapsis, 190 kilometers periapsis, which is a acceptable orbit for the future transfer of this payload. We have payload separation. Payload separation is successful. And we're switching to a simulated view here. 
Here's a simulated view of the payload as it uh, progresses away from the third stage. And you can see the four satellites atop their transfer stage there, the transfer stage powered by an Estes engine. With this stage of the mission successful, our next broadcast will be an update on the status of the four satellites around the moon, and we'll cover the progress from Earth to the moon as well as their attempts to get into orbit around the moon at that time. We will not have a separate broadcast about the lunar transfer, however that will be covered in the post-launch press conference as it is expected to occur prior to that press conference. With that, thank you for watching this coverage of the launch of Kwalun Sat on the Saturn 1H rocket, and we hope you enjoyed this broadcast. With that, this is the EDB signing off.